you only knew how close things are sometimes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just rush, 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 rush to the very last second. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. It is Wednesday, November 15th, and things are looking up today. I'm not as uh, depressed as I was a day or two ago. And uh, unfortunately, though, uh, even though things are much better, I'm going to have to eat some crow or humble pie or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, whenever I make a big mistake, I like to own it and explain it and, uh, you know, instead of just washing it under the uh, bridge, you know. Um, anyway, uh, you know, I was all depressed mostly about the uh, 2022 Kawasaki Mule. I had made the claim that they had canceled my um, extended warranty after I had paid $1,700 for it. Well, I, you've also heard me say that I'm a very, very poor reader. <laughs> And this is a real good example of that. And I'm so ashamed, really, that I acted the way I did uh, based on what I found out. Because when I reread the letter, it's like, how did I get that out of that? Because <laughs> that's not what this letter says. Or at least, anyway, make a long story short, uh, it was all my fault. I misread a letter. In fact, I think what this was was one of those marketing scam letters where they're trying to sell you something. And they were talking about the warranty had expired, you know, or, or that they weren't going to cover the warranty or something. I don't know. It was just, and you know me, and the way I read, uh, yeah, well, I screwed up. That's all I can tell you. So all that frustration for the last six, seven months was all my own fault. And um, the Kawasaki is at the dealership, <laughs> and they're going to fix it. So... And uh, I told them about changing the oil and the filter and all that and, you know, and that I didn't use the Kawasaki stuff. And they said, no problem. It's not a big deal. So there you go. <laughs> what an idiot. I'm just an idiot sometimes. I mean, just sometimes. I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm really a smart guy. And other times I think, you are a moron. <laughs> Well, anyway, so that's out of the way. So the, the Kawasaki uh, mule is hopefully getting fixed, and it's supposed to be fixed within a week to 10 days. We'll see that when that happens. Uh, I kind of doubt that part because I know they're always really behind. But anyway, we'll see. And as I mentioned to you, the same company um, has the Bobcat parts store now. And it didn't bother me so much to order the Bobcat parts from there now after I finally figured out that I was the idiot, not them. Um, anyway, so I got ordered the Bobcat parts also. And believe it or not, this is nothing I couldn't believe. The Bobcat part, original equipment part, is actually cheaper than the uh, aftermarket part that I had put on the other side. By a, a few dollars, not very much, but, you know, 20 bucks or something. So, hey... Why not get the OEM, you know? And so that's a good thing, but that's going to be a week or so before that Bobcat part gets here. But at least I know how to fix it. It's a huge job. It's not simple to do, but I can fix it because I fixed the other one. Well, I'll probably have to have JR to help me because it's not a it's not a one-man job entirely. I One man can do it if one man really knows what he's doing. Unfortunately, this man only knows kind of what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, and I then ordered also the Polaris Ranger parts from them also, from the same company. So I got Bobcat parts coming, you know, the Kawasaki's being fixed, and I'm getting parts for the Polaris. This is the part for the Polaris. Can you tell what that is? It's a ball joint, and it holds the front end together. And you can see there, there's a little bit of play in that ball joint. In fact, if I turn it just right, it pops right out of there. Uh, yeah, it's, that's not good. So I ordered all four of these. Well, guess how much these look? Whoops. I just, that just hit the keyboard. <laughs> I may be ordering a new keyboard, too. Uh, guess how much that little baby costs? Right at 50 bucks a piece. And I had to get four of them. Yeah. Hey, nothing cheap no more. <laughs> it's just ridiculous how much stuff costs. 
But I don't, you know, I don't complain so much about the cost as now, especially now I'm almost like relieved to spend money now <laughs> after all, after all the heartache I caused myself. <sighs> okay. I've admitted it. I was an idiot. All right. So there you go. Let's just drop it and go on from there. <laughs> Also, the parts came in for the heater that I'm trying to repair. This is a... Uh, let me get it here and show it to you. Uh, well, I didn't know I had all this many parts. But anyway, it's this big heater, and you can probably see there's firewood logs in there. And it glows and it has flames and all that kind of look. It looks like flames. They're fake. Uh, but anyway, this board here, I took the uh, one uh, plug out of it. And now I don't see the plug. Oh, here it is. Yeah. No? Well, shoot. I wanted to show you how bad it was. Well, I'll be darned. Well, I don't know where it went, but <laughs> I don't know where it went because it was here just a few minutes ago. But anyway, um, this this is the new plug, and the old plug is burnt on, on this one uh, connector right here. In other words, you can see it's all melted and everything, but this is the new one, and it's not melted. So uh, this will be going back into this board here, and I'll have to solder it in place and uh, make that happen. Let's see if it actually fits. Yes, it does. It fits right on the board just like that. And I just have to solder the back side here. So hopefully that'll fix the problem with that heater. And I am going to make a video on that and show you that. And probably that'll be a two-part video. It'll be the first part just fixing it. And then a, there'll be a second part where I build a surround around it to put it inside a fireplace. So it'll be like a fireplace insert. Um, It'll serve two purposes. Number one, it'll actually provide heat for that fireplace. And number two, it'll stop any drafts from going up the fireplace, even though I already have it blocked off at the top, at the very top of the fireplace. So it'll still help a little bit, I think. Okay, so that's the name of that tune. Um, and I'm going to do that. Hopefully, I'm going to do that as soon as we're done here. I'm going to fix that thing and get that heater and test it and see if it works. I uh, also, you know, I like to recommend stuff when it's really, really good. And when it's not so good, you know, I tell you about that too. But here's something that is really good. In case you spend time outdoors and uh, you can get yourself one of these jackets. I'll tell you the brand and everything. I'm seriously telling you, I stand by this thing 100%. This is Magellan Outdoors is the brand name. It says... And this one says Made in Bangladesh. I don't see any other real names on here other than it's uh, Mossy Oak Camo. It says Mossy Oak uh, Bottomland is the camo name. And again, Magellan Outdoors is the brand. This is the warmest coat I have ever, ever put on in my life. In the past, when I would go deer hunting, I would wear, and I'm not exaggerating, I would wear seven layers on top. I presently have two on, so I have an undershirt and, a, and this shirt that I would put on several jackets, and then I would top that off with a heavy, you know, like camo coat or whatever. So I'd have seven layers on on top, and now I just wore this this morning, just the t-shirt and this shirt and this coat, and sat out there in 28 degree weather, or it might have even been cooler than that down in this valley. But uh, anyway, I was, it was, you know, really cold out there. It's just, it was every bit as warm as when I put on the seven layers and probably warmer. I mean, I was just as toasty as I could be in that coat. It's, it's crazy good. And this coat, um, this, you know, it's got these double flaps on it. So it seals across the front here and it zips all the way up so that this thing comes up around your chin. So it zips up really tight and it's got the big thick hood on it also. Um, I really, I'm telling you, if you spend time outdoors and you know, even maybe, I, I would assume even riding a motorcycle, this would be great. You know, anything like that where you're really gonna be outside in the really cold, 
This baby is warm. And I'm seriously telling you, it is worth every penny. I think I paid less, well, I know I paid less than $200 for it. And I honestly, knowing what I know now, I'd pay $500 it, to have one that good. These gloves are also pretty good, and these might already be on the products I use page. This is the second pair of these I've had, and when you're wearing these too, they're, uh, they've got 100 grams of in, uh, Thinsulate is what it says. No, that's what it says. I don't even think these whole things weigh 100 grams, but I could be wrong about that. I don't know, but I mean, they do feel fairly heavy. They're thick gloves. Um, but these gloves are really good too. And if they're not on the products I use page, I'll put them on there because I did get these off Amazon. Now this, I can't find this exact code on Amazon right now, but if I do find it, I'll put it on there. Um, anyway, but I just thought I'd mention that to you. I got that at Academy Sports here in Rolla. Um, so I just thought I'd mention you to you about that. But trust me, that is one warm coat. I, I've never wore a coat that's anywhere near as warm as that thing. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, had one or two more things, I think. Oh, yeah. I have a video here I wanted to show you. Um, this is a phenomenon that happens here on the farm quite often uh, when it's, you know, below freezing. So take a look at this. Here's a phenomenon that you see in the country that you'll never see in the city. It's called a frost flower. See how the frost has come up on that weed? Here's a smaller one. Here's one over here. And here's another one right there. They're pretty much everywhere this morning. Very cold out this morning. Let's see if I can find another interesting looking one. Here's a couple over here that are pretty big. Thought you might like to see that. It's something you don't get to see in the city. Yeah, I had never seen those really, I don't think, until I bought this farm. Um, they're fairly common here. Um, I don't know why they're more common here than maybe in other places I've hunted. I honestly can't remember if I ever saw those anywhere else I hunted or not. I, I really don't remember. But I definitely see them here a lot. And uh, it's just some kind of phenomenon where there's some kind of, I don't know, moisture coming out of the ground and it just, you know, accumulates there on those little uh, spindly weeds and uh, wherever you find it you generally find a lot of it in that one area or whatever. Um, I did go out this morning and uh, I sat on the stand and just about daylight I uh, saw something cut across the trail and I, I saw it too late and I, it w I could see from its shoulders back you know I could see its whole body and could have shot it I mean I know it was a deer um, but I couldn't see the head so I don't know whether you know whether it was a buck or no well actually I kind of do know it was a buck I, I could tell by the body shape and the way it was moving it was a buck anyway but so it went into the woods there and I could hear it wandering around for you know another minute or two and then it turned and it came it was down the hill further from me and it came back across. Well, this time I had the gun up. I was on it, and it was a nice big buck. 99.9% um, .9 of your deer hunters out there would have shot it for sure. Um, I watched it and let it walk through that trail. And then it, it, I had the crosshairs right on its heart. I definitely could have shot it, and there's no question about it. And uh, Anyway, it walked through the trail, walked through the woods, and then there's another trail down the hill. And about another two or three minutes later, it walked through that trail. And again, I was on it again, just double checking it and had to cross hairs again, right on the heart. But I just let him walk. He was a big buck. Um, I've got so many on the wall that unless it's an absolute giant, I'm not going to shoot it. You know, um, it's going to have to just be a monster. Um, but it was really a nice deer. <laughs> like I said, 99% of the guys that would see that would shoot it for sure. Um, let's see, what else was I going to tell you? Um, we, um, 
uh, jammed at uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit last night. And if you'll indulge me, I might want to do one. Uh, my I want to practice my one tune again for that funeral that's going to be coming up. Uh, reason is, is you know, it's not to do the same thing over again. It's that I've dropped the key, and I want to hear it played back. I mean, I I did this last night in this key, and it seemed to work okay. But I want to hear it uh, back on the video, and so this is probably the easiest way for me to do that. And. Um, if, for those of you who might be new and don't know what I'm talking about, Gene Hemme, a good friend of mine, he's, he's in his 80s, um, but uh, he's losing his battle with cancer. Uh, the cancer just came up, I don't know, six, seven months ago, something like that, maybe, maybe 10 months ago. I don't really, it's hard to keep track of time. But anyway, uh, you know, prior to that, he was in perfect health, and he's asked that we sing a few songs at his funeral. And uh, this is the one that I get to sing, and I'm proud to do it. I just want to be sure I do a really good job. That's why I want to practice it again here and hear the playback, and then I'll know if I've, if I've got a better key here. I'm going to do this in B flat if you're playing along at home. <clears throat> I know your life on earth was trouble. Only you could know the pain You weren't afraid to face the devil You were no stranger to the rain so go rest high on that mountain Sun your work on earth is done Go to heaven a shouting Love for the Father and the Son Oh, how we cry The day you left us We gathered round Your grave to grieve Wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice sing. So go rest high on that mountain. Sun, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven, a shouting love for the Father and the Son. Go to heaven. It's really a hard thing to do to sing a song at a funeral. It's really difficult. Um, let's see. I think that covers everything for this morning. Um, my well, I, I wanted to mention my grandson Trinian and well and Leighton also, but my grandson Trinian specifically wants to hunt with me one day. He's coming from Ohio, gonna be here on Monday evening and so Tuesday is the last day of deer season here so he wants to go out with me so 
I'm looking forward to that, and uh, we'll take Trinian out uh, to sit on a stand uh, with me. He probably won't be carrying a gun or anything like that, but uh, he just will go out there just for the experience. And I guess that's it. So let's look at the comments. Bruce Hines was the first one before we went live. He says, good morning, Jerry. Hope things have improved since Monday. And as I mentioned, they have after I eat my little humble pie there. Uh, Brian Webster, good morning from Sunrise, Florida. Ben Boyd, good morning, uh, Jerry. Glad you're back. Hellcat Customs, uh, morning from Northwestern Pennsylvania. It was 20 degrees this morning here. Burr, yep, 20 degrees. It's It's been below that already here a couple of times. It's kind of crazy here in Missouri that it gets that cold, but we've had it in the teens already this year. It's kind of nuts, uh, especially down in this valley. It gets cold, and it's a damp cold. So it's, it's not like a, a cold like... I don't know. Some places are kind of a dry cold, and that's cold. Don't get me wrong, it's cold. But this damp cold, man, it goes clear through you. <laughs> it just goes clear through you. Um, Charles Salkowitz was the first one to check in after we went uh, live, and then Christia Thomason. And then let's see, Yolanda's music is on here. Hi, Yolanda. Sorry I didn't make it to the jam last night. Mark and I was out hunting and got back super late. Well, what were you hunting for? <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm sure you were out deer hunting. Um, Hugh O'Connor, uh, so glad things are a bit better. It can only get worse. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe some rows of luck for once. Yep, well, I guess that's true. Um, <clears throat> though for everything that happens good, I can match you about nine different things that, <laughs> that I just don't even bother to tell you about. It's, uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> it really, you would be surprised, seriously. Um, but like I said, overall and the big things in life, I'm very, 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 very lucky. Uh, it's really hard to explain how good my luck is on the big things. And I'm very thankful for that, trust me. Um, James Akers, I get those letters too. They claim my warranty ended and this is the last chance to reinstate. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. And I, you know, after I finally realized it was a hoax thing, I just threw it in the trash. Like I said, I'm a terrible reader. That's, and I should have thought about that when I read it the first time. Um, but I thought I was reading what I thought I was reading. Okay, uh... So Charles Wilson says, good morning. Could you please speak about what I can do on my call elongated saddles? Can you speak about what I can Oh my call elongated saddles? Huh. I don't know, uh, are you talking about elongating the holes? Uh, if that's the case, I, I don't know what to tell you other than you, you just, I typically don't try to elongate them. I just drill them larger and that kind of accomplishes the same thing. Though some people don't like that because they think that causes it to rock more, but I don't have any problem with it when I do it, and uh, I can keep the, the saddle on straight even if I do make the holes larger. But some people can't seem to manage that, and they really don't like it. So I'll just throw that in there to explain that. Uh, Walt Willard, good morning, Jerry. Glad to see things turning around. Yep, and I might just say that to the people that are you know watching that there's a lot of depression in this world, and. Um, People get very depressed. Um, I've mentioned to you before that I've taken a lot of psychology classes because depression kind of runs in my family. It really does. And uh, I, uh, you know, I took them mostly to understand why, I, why things happened the way they did as, as I was growing up. And uh, it was one of the smartest things I ever did, I think, was taking those um psychology classes and learning about psychology and different things. 
But uh, anyway, what I was going to say is that whenever you do find yourself really, really depressed, just try to tell yourself that overnight things can change. I mean, literally overnight. I mean, you can sleep on it and the next day things can just look better. And uh, so just try to hang in there when you're depressed and and just endure and uh, know that uh, pretty much everybody goes through these things and that it can it can really look 100% different the next day. So just hang in there. Kim Wilf Williford. Uh, good morning, Jerry, from Kim Williford in Gainesville, Georgia. Well, good morning to you. Uh, Christia Thomason, got to admit, I I'm glad that the buck got to see another day. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I get it. Um, you know, I get it. I'm not even going to make a comment on it because I get it. Uh, Yolanda's music. I definitely l like it in B flat. Many prayers for your friend. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> love the new key. Thank you. Ben Boyd. Magellan Outdoors is a private brand name under Academy Sports Apparel. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, there you go. So I probably won't find it on Amazon then. But uh, I can tell you for sure that, that thing's worth the money. It's just plain worth the money. So if you, you know, if you, like I said, if you spend a lot of time outdoors, um, I can definitely recommend that one 100%. Walt Willard says, great job on the song. Thank you very much. Uh, Kim Williford says, beautiful. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I could tell when I sang it the first time in C, which is where I've always done it. Now, with the band, you'd be surprised. You can sing generally higher with a band around you than you can on an individual instrument. And you can also sing higher when you're standing up. But I don't know how I'm going to be singing when it comes to that funeral. So, you know, it may be that I'll be sitting down. I really just don't know, um, you know. And um, so I wanted to have it in a more comfortable key. And I think the B flat is a better key for that. Uh, let's see. Greetings from Switzerland or Sweden. I'm sorry. See, again, I told you I can't read. Marigold Tyne says, greetings from Sweden. Um, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in this morning. We have 127 viewers. Thank you for those that were concerned that I didn't have a vlog out yesterday. And the main reason was because I was busy going to that dealership and hauling stuff up there, hauling that that uh, machine up there and getting parts and all that good stuff. So it was just a hectic day. And uh, anyway, it just and then I had, you know, go back into town later to play the show. So or to play at the Dickie's Barbecue. We call it a show. It's not really a show, but uh, we have a good time there. And it uh, turned out really good, even though last night it was just me, uh, excuse me, me, Don, and uh, Gary were the only three there last night. I, I kind of, I knew uh, Leon wasn't going to make it, but I thought, um, uh, why can't I just say people's names? It drives me crazy. <laughs> Just nuts. I don't know why I can't do it. <sighs> I know her name better than I know my own name, and I can't say it. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about, the girl in the band. <laughs> it's, it's pitiful. It's just pitiful. It's a disease. I swear to you, it's a disease. I'm so embarrassed over it, I can't even tell you. But I can look right at the person and can't say their name. It's just horrible. I'll just let that be the last word. I'm eating pie, eating humble pie and on all sides. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah.